Hey, it's Tim here and welcome to this video on dashboard grids in Tableau Desktop. What I wanted to do is show you how to use this very simple feature to help improve your layout in Tableau Dashboard Design. And so to switch the grid on, just head on over to the top and it's the third option from the top. So if you select Show Grid, you'll see that I've got this very, very big grid enabled here. Uh, you can see uh, it goes, I think it's about 140 pixels wide. Um, to change that size, you just go down to the fourth option here, select grid options, and you can see here that I left it set at 140. Let's just reduce that down to 17. And now you can start to see that effect a little bit better. If I just drag this up here and zoom in, you can see that as I change the grid sizes, uh, the background grid size also changes. So if I set that to 40, the spacing changes as well. So it's a very useful feature to have on your dashboard. Now, if you have a grid, what you typically want to do is align content to the grid. However, at the moment in 2019.4 of Tableau Desktop, we don't have the ability to snap to grid. So what you have to do is you have to typically think about what kind of layouts can you use a grid. And the main one is a floated layout. Floated layouts uh, allow you to basically just place content onto the canvas and then you can just move them around freely. There's no sort of layout containers that are tiled in the layout at all. And you can see here on my layout options here on the left hand side, I have no tiled containers. Now the benefit of this is that it gives you a lot of freedom as to where you place items, but then you get into this sort of weird space where you're trying to line things up and you haven't got any point of reference. And that's where grids come into play. I'm gonna set the dashboard grid sizing to about 20 pixels just to make it easier to see what's going on. And as I do that, you'll see that it changes. And I'm just gonna zoom into the top left-hand side of this dashboard. Now, one thing to note, when you move content around, you're typically trying to line it to the grid. And so I can just select this sheet here and I'll drag it and place it there. And then you'll see that this is now overlapping with the chart on the right hand side. So then I'll place that uh, sort of right hand side section over there. Now this very top option here is taking the whole entire width of the view, you can see. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna sort of uh, drag the size into this boundary here, make sure it's 20 pixels from the left and 20 pixels from the top. So I've now got a nice border of about 20 pixels going all the way around. And as you see, what I'm doing here is I'm just slowly moving the content uh, as to where I need it. Now, if I zoom back out and I just scroll down here, I can start to do this a little bit faster as I get a little bit more comfortable with the tool. And uh, you'll see here that the dashboard height that I've got doesn't go equally into the total height. And so I've got an uneven sort of number of pixels at the bottom there. If I press T, this will switch the dashboard uh, uh, tab over here. So if I press T again, you can see these two are switching. And I'll actually go to the dashboard uh, options here and I'll set it to 60. I just need a multiple of two so that the bottom finishes in exactly the right place. And then I can now maintain a 20 pixel width all the way around the dashboard. That's pretty much there. And when you're working with large layout containers, those work too. You can just drag them there and I can drag this one at the top down a little bit and make sure that sits there perfectly. And now if I zoom back out and I switch off the grid, you can start to see things are starting to take shape. On the right hand side, I haven't done a great job here. So let me just uh, bring that option in. Again, you can see the width isn't perfectly aligned, but I'm gonna take a guess at the gap there. And I'm gonna leave everything else pretty much as is, just gonna add a gap in here. And so I'm doing this very quickly just to show you the net effect. And the net effect should be that you have a design that's a lot more coherent and it's a lot neater. Now, I have a lot of OCD, and so this is still not good enough uh, for my standards of layout. And so what I want to show you now is how to take the usage of grids to the very next level. Before I do that, I want to show you a poll that I ran on Twitter over the last few days. I simply ask how many people have been using grids? And I got a range of sort of responses. And um, one of the interesting things I called out was this. This is called the grid system. 
The grid system is a very coherent way of laying out content. In fact, if you look at magazines or print or websites, they all tend to use some sort of column-based structure to lay out content. And the grids and columns help give structure to pretty much everything and where it's placed. If you look here, you'll see that the lines here, the spacing of text, even follow that grid system rule. And even this header here follows the same grid structure as the text below. And so you can actually bring this into your dashboard design and use it to amplify the layout and the structure of all your content. Now, there's a lot of reasons why you'd want to use a grid design. Uh, I'm going to link to this article uh, in the description, and it talks a bit about what grids can do for your design. Uh, essentially, structure, sort of conformity. If you're collaborating with other people, it's a much, much easier system that everyone can understand. And there's a whole host of great reasons here why you should be using grids more in your design. But it's also a very hard thing to get right. If I look at my dashboard, now, the size that I chose is 1,350 pixels across by 860. In every organization, I always get slightly different dashboard uh, sizes to use because they've all got different laptops and screens available to users. However, what's not often done is some consideration as to do these proportions actually allow us to split content in a cohesive way? And so if you go over to this tool, I'll link it in the description, there are many tools like it available on the internet. All it does is it takes the width of your content, you see I've already typed here 1,350 pixels, and it distributes it evenly based on the number of columns you'd like to have, and then a ratio for the spacing on the outer sides and the insides. So if I just set this to one, you'll see here that the spacing on this particular one is exactly the same all the way through. The spacing of the gutter is exactly the same as the spacing of the margin. So it's sort of a very coherent setup all the way through. You can actually see here, there's one that uses a 20 gutter and then the column width is 170. Now 170 doesn't go into 20 equally, so our grid system that we're using doesn't quite work out. But we can take this design and this column structure to help us distribute this content in a much more coherent way. If I go back to this grid guide, uh, one of the things it allows you to do is download an image of your grid system. And so before I do that, I'm just going to set this to five. Looking at my dashboard, I can see I've got sort of three main bits of content. I've got the area at the top, this area in the middle, and then the controls on the right hand side. If I think a little bit more, this bottom half is split into sort of three key areas. And so it makes sense if the filters and the control have a little less priority than the two, uh, three charts that I've got here in the middle of the dashboard. This top section is going to go all the way across regardless. So if I just focus on this part of the design here where the main content is, I need these to be the same. So if I was to sort of think in my head, how would this work? Well, this map takes roughly double the amount of space as this uh, region over here. And again, these two charts in terms of width take double the amount of space as this uh, filter menu over here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically look for a column layout of about five columns because I've got one over here, two in these two charts and another two in these maps. So if I go back to the grid system, I'll go for five. And I'll set a gutter ratio that's actually twice the size of my margin, okay? And I'm gonna go for something that gives us more space. I'm really sort of generous with white space. I think it's a great thing to have. So I'll download this image and I'll save it into my dashboard grids folder. You'll see that I've downloaded one before. And then what I'll do is I'll bring that into my dashboard as a floated image. So let's just drag that in. And we'll choose this image very, very carefully. This is uh, this top one over here. And when we place it, we just need to make sure it's centered, apply that uh, change, and then now we have our image. Now for this to work, I need it to be touching the very edges of our content. So it needs to be the same size as our dashboard. So if I head over to the layout tab by hitting T, I can select this uh, image and I'm going to give it an X position of zero. That means it's going to be touching the very left-hand side of our content. And I'm going to give it a width of 1,350. Okay, so now it's going all the way across and it's now sitting smack bang where I'd like it. 
Now I need to be careful as I resize it that I don't move it. I need it to stay exactly where it is. So I'm just gonna position this so that it just covers the numbers here and I can have it on my dashboard without it sort of confusing anything else. Now that I've got this grid system on my dashboard, I can now start divvying up the content in a more meaningful way. And I'm gonna bring my grid back and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna set the grid to a very low number just as a visual cue that I can use. So I'm just gonna set it to five. And now if I zoom in and we move over to the left, I'm actually just going to now start bringing this over here on the left-hand side. Now, if you recall, if I go back to my website, this gutter is about 20 pixels, okay? So if I just go back in over here, I can just nudge this a little bit more, just make sure that it's perfect. And the map is taking two columns worth of content. So that means it's going to stop just below the edge of this second column, okay? I'm gonna bring this top section down. The reason being, I've got this nice big gutter here on the left-hand side, so I'd like to have an equally large amount of space between the content just to make sure things are spaced out evenly. Now, if I go to the bottom, I'm gonna create another similar sort of area space at the bottom. And now this is starting to look a little bit better. I'm gonna take this uh, chart here on the right-hand side and I'm gonna bring that in here so it meets almost like a perfect junction between these two bits of content. Now, something's not quite right here because I know as I select this option, it's very difficult to see the edge. Sometimes when you're working with Tableau, because you're working with charts, you, your visual sort of cues aren't the same as design cues. And so you just have to sort of get used to where the charts and the objects in your visualization actually touch uh, the margins that you're trying to sort of observe. Okay, now I'm gonna go on the right-hand side, work on that side a little bit more, bring that in. And these are very sort of minor changes here. I'm not doing anything sort of uh, onerous uh, at all. And if you've got a floated layout, this is really gonna help make sure your content sits just the way it should, okay? Now, if I scroll into this a little bit and zoom and just take a look at this, you can see here that this isn't quite set up correctly. And I just want to make sure it's just above this little grid line. So this is not precise. We can be precise a little later on uh, and I'll show you how. Um, now, if I drag the right-hand side over there and then I go to the bottom and I just bring that up a little bit, it's roughly about the same. I'm not trying to be too accurate here. I just leave that there like that. And now if I hit G, you'll see that now the spacing on this is a lot better. It's a lot more evenly spread out. This is not touching the edge like it was before. The margins around the whole thing are more consistent. And it's now starting to just, just carry its own in terms of its layout here. The thing that I don't quite like is that these two charts here are buffering too much against each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom in. I'm gonna hold G again. And uh, I wanna make sure that both of these actually end up being the right size. So if I, because they're floating, I can't change like the height or use a fixed width or height. So what I have to do is I have to go back out. And if I select the top one, I'll see it's got a height of 292. And if I select the bottom one, it's got a height of 291. So they are pretty much the same. So what I'll do is I'll just set these to 80 each, and that will lose 10 pixels on both pieces of content. So if I set that to 80, there you go. You can see that these, these two change now and it's a little bit more sort of uh, evenly spaced out. And now what I can do is I can continue to move this back down to sit where it should do, just there. And this top one didn't change. And so by adding, taking 10 pixels off this bottom chart and this top chart, I've now introduced the space that I need between those sheets. I can now go back to this grid option at the top and I just need to fix this header here. You see this title is sitting too far on the left hand side. So what I need to do is I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to make it take up the whole entire space. Okay. Again, the better way to do that is not to manually try and do it is to select the X position zero and just set the width to 1350 pixels. Okay. And now that that's done, we know it's taking up the whole entire width. But now what I can do is I can actually add outer padding to this. Now, if I add it all the way around, it starts to squash my content and it starts to look a little bit funny. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna untick that all sides equal option. And just on the left-hand side, I'm gonna add 20 pixels 
Um, maybe it's actually 25 if I just keep going, not 225, 25. Uh, that's a little bit better. Uh, let's try 30. It's a bit of a guessing game until we get just the right amount of pixels. There we go. So 35 on the left. And for good measure, I'm going to say 35 on the right hand side as well. So now our content is nice and evenly distributed. It's a little bit weird because we've chosen the five column layout and the top we've got seven objects going across. But because they go evenly across the whole entire thing and they're an uneven number, it ends up still working out because I've got a layout of seven items across the top, then five across the bottom, which means this profit per order column always looks central regardless of how this layout system works. And so now if I close uh, this option here and I hide the grid, you can see that's a much better spaced out dashboard. And so that's the real sort of advanced way of using dashboard grids. There's a lot of features we'd love to add to this, like snapping to allow us to just, you know, move the content around a little bit more freely, grouping, anchoring content to each other so you can group multiple objects, then move them around as a, as a group. At the moment, the only way to do that is to use layout containers, but hopefully in the future, we'll see improvements to the system to make this much, much easier. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, drop a like, let me know in the comments. If not, let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see and I'll try and get to those at some point.